this year's X Games Aspen, the dazzling quadruple flip could make its debut in snowboard competition. In fact, Max Perot landed the first ever cab quadruple underflip just months after getting silver at last year's Big Air. Here's an ESPN Sports Science breakdown of what it takes to pull off this mind-blowing maneuver. First, takeoff speed. To maximize flight time, a boarder needs to approach the kicker at more than 50 miles per hour. In fact, a decrease in launch speed of just three miles per hour translates to losing up to 16 feet of air. Next, angular velocity. A quad flip's rotational movement is primarily end over end. That means, unlike a triple cork, in which rotation is spread over several axes, a rider attempting a quad flip has to rotate extremely rapidly around just one axis. In fact, to complete four flips on a single axis in a typical three-second flight, a rider needs to hit a peak angular velocity of at least 675 degrees per second. That's as fast as a monster truck's tires moving at 22 miles per hour. And finally, the landing. Located inside each ear canal are about 20,000 nerve fibers responsible for keeping track of your spatial orientation. But when you're spinning rapidly, a disconnect between visual information and what's happening to those fibers in your inner ear can disrupt what's called equilibrioception or sense of balance. This is key to nailing the trick since borders will land with roughly half a ton of force. That's more than three times the amount of force an Olympic gymnast experiences when sticking a twist off a vault. To put the extreme motion of a quadruple flip in perspective, consider this. Our calculations reveal that a boarder attempting this trick can experience nearly four Gs of centripetal acceleration. For ESPN Sports Science, I'm John Brinkus.